Good day everyone. My name is Marley Angela S. Wakli and I am one of the presenters under the group 19 reporters of the topic The Role of Faith and Religion in Ethics. And so we have the learning outcomes for this topic. At the end of this module, the students should be able to first discuss the meaning and importance of faith, second, describe the various characteristics of faith, third, identify the elements of religion and the role that they play in faith, fourth, determine the different major religions and discuss their teachings, and fifth, which is the last one, explain the importance of faith and religion in one's own life. Now, what is faith? The Bible articulates that faith it is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. In Christian ethics, faith is a personal encounter with God, a self-disclosure of the Divine Father, and personal adherence to Him. That is according to Pest 1994. First of all, faith is a personal adherence of a person to a being he or she considers to be the most powerful than him or her. So, at this point, I am a Southern Baptist. And when do we say faith? Of course, it is our personal encounter with the Lord. It is a self-disclosure to God wherein we trust Him, we have faith on Him wholeheartedly. At the same time, and inseparably, it is a free ascent to the whole truth that such being has revealed. So in us, we also acknowledge that the Lord is the most powerful, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords, wherein we we trust and we have put our faith into. And according to the Catholic Church, Christian faith differs from one's faith of any human person and is right and just to entrust oneself, of course, wholly to God and to believe absolutely what He says. According to the Catholicism of the Catholic Church in 1994, and here are the following characteristics of faith according to the Catholicism of the Catholic Church. First, faith is a grace from God. Second, faith is a human act. Third, faith seeks understanding. Fourth, the act of faith is a free act. Fifth, Faith is necessary to obtain salvation. Six, faith requires perseverance. Seven, faith is the beginning of eternal life. Now, what do we mean by those characteristics of faith? Let's find out. Number one, faith is a grace from God. Faith is a gift from God and thus it must be received as a gift. It is a supernatural virtue infused by God. For this, faith to be exercised, a person needs the grace of God to move and assist him or her. He or she must have the interior inspiration of the Holy Spirit that moves the heart and converts it to God, the God who opens the eyes and the minds, and He makes one easy for him or her. To believe the truth. Number two, faith is a human act. Trusting God and believing the truths He has revealed are contrary neither to human freedom nor to human reason. Through faith, the human intellect and will cooperate with the divine grace. Therefore, believing in a higher being is an act of an intellect that ascends the divine truth as commanded by one's will and moved by the grace of God. 
So it's, it is a human act wherein you have the intellectual desire to have faith in the Lord. And with that, it is through the grace of God that moves within you. Number three, faith seeks understanding. You receive the gift of faith and with that you believe for you to understand more because you desire to know more about the higher being whom you believe into. And in the words of St. Augustine, I believe in order to understand and I understand the better to believe. Number four, the act of faith is a free act. In this way, no one is forced to have faith in God. One has the choice to believe in God or not, which makes faith is a free human act. It is your desire, it is your willingness to have faith in God. And one is not being forced to have faith in God. It is a human act of giving them freedom to choose what they want. Number five, faith is necessary to obtain salvation. The church holds that believing in Jesus Christ and in God who sent him is necessary to obtain salvation. Without faith, it is impossible to please God and to be able to obtain eternal life. In the context of the Catholic Church, it is only through faith that one could be absolved of his of or her sins. Number seven, faith is the beginning of eternal life. The church teaches that faith is the beginning of eternal life. Through faith, one is promised of the joys of eternal life. However, many experiences such as suffering, death, and injustice can shake the foundations of one's faith. This is why, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, one must walk by faith and not by sight. So in this earthly tent we live right now, suffering such as death, injustice, and among all those challenges being mentioned are what we experience nowadays. That's why with that we tend to ask the Lord why. But with the faith that we have, with the faith that we received as a gift from God, we need to accept everything because long enough we will be with the Lord in heaven because the Lord has prepared a place for us where, where sufferings are no longer experienced up in heaven. So this is what faith is the beginning of eternal life means. Thank you. Good day everyone. My name is Marden Ginsalon from BSED English 2. And today we tackled about the role of faith and religion in ethics. Religion is a collection of cultural systems, belief systems, and worldviews that relate humanity to spirituality and sometimes to moral values. When we say religion, it defines it as a belief sa a tao. It is also defining the culture and traditions of an individual as well as our faith. Religion is all about unity and mone ginatawag na a church. It is also helps an individual to understand the meaning of his or her life. As we all know, almost 3,000 plus ang religion around the world na ay mga trinity, oneness, and etc. But we are the same in God. Nata mga lahi-lahi nga perception sa kinabuhi and only God knows everything o gunsang nasunod sa atong kasing-kasing. And there are three elements of religion. First is beliefs. Beliefs is a state or habit of mind which trust or confidence is placed in some person or thing. When we say belief, mao ni siya ang first nga step o ganong na mo si God, it's because you believe that He is our Savior and it is also defining our trust and confidence. Practices 
Second is practices. By practices, diri ma-define if naabadjud kay beliefs sa ginoo. In my own experience, I experience prayers, fasting, sacrifices, and etc. And that is practices. Practices, nagasimbolize ni siya on how to express or insao ni mo pag-assert ang imong faith. Third is moral community. Moral community is defining that these individual are joined together through their common faith. Sa usa ka religious community, kailangan na ay na ay organized structure or religious leader. So ang example ani isang mga pastors, ministers, and etc. Sa among religion, if gusto ka mahimong part sa among community, kailangan ni mo magpabaptisan through water, and that is moral community. And we proceed to the four types of religious organizations. First is church. Church is a Christian church. It is not a building, but a body of believers united in Christ. Its role is to worship God. The church is the body of Christ of which He is. He is had in Ephesians chapter one verse twenty two to twenty three say, and God placed all things under His feet and appointed Him to be a head over everything for the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him who fills everything in every way. The body of Christ is made up of all believers in Jesus Christ from the day of Pentecost in Acts. Two, until Christ return, biblically we may regard the church in two ways, as the universal church or as the local church. Second is denomination. When we say denomination, it is a way of classifying things. It names the types or values of something. It is also a Christian denomination. It's a distinct religious body within Christianity, identified by traits such as a name, organizations, and doctrine. It is one religion among many. For example, Baptist. Catholic, Seventh Day Adventists, and other religions are all Christian denominations. Third is sect. Sect is a religious group with beliefs that make it different from the larger or more established religion. It has separated from. It has separated from a Christian sect. A sect is also a small group of people who share particular set of political beliefs. Furthermore, sect is a relatively small religious organization that is not closely integrated into the larger society, and that of ten conflicts, which at least some of its norms and values. Lastly, is Cult. Cult is a system of religious veneration and devotion directed toward particular figure or object. The difference between church and cult is church is a conventional religious organization, while cult is a devout religious organizations with novel beliefs and practices. And that is the all types of religious organization. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Francis Archie Sinomayal and I will be discussing today about the major religions in the world. We have five major religions in the world which are Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, and Buddhism. First, what is Judaism? They believe that there are only one true God. For example, Followers of Judaism live strictly in accordance of the Ten Commandments. Of Second, we have Christianity. What is Christianity? To be a Christian is to believe the Trinity and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For example, they believe in God's love for all things, that God is watching over them at all times, and Jesus is the Son of God. Third, we have Islam. What is Islam? Islam is a central and the belief of the Allah is the only God and that Muhammad is a messenger of God. For example, Allah also demands that Muslim be prayerful and supervent to him as he is a master. Fourth, we have Hinduism. 
What is Hinduism? Hinduism believes that reincarnation and all action have direct effects. For example, in Hinduism, the Dharma is the religious and moral law governing individual's conduct. And lastly, we have Buddhism. Although still considered a religion is recognized by Buddhism themselves as way of life. So, for example, followers of Buddhism teaching a Gautama Buddha who taught his followers that, that once and in a life achieving enlightenment.